You could be mad, cause baby I'm a loner. Yeah, you could be sad, cause baby I'm a loner. Yeah. Yo, I hit the jewel, I got some goals. I sold a little weed, but I could never sell my soul. And when I'm in LA, you find me out in Lil Toe. Come a vocal with my ramen, I'ma need another blow. Let's go. Children? There's no meaning to anything. Communities being torn apart? Walls being erected? Because leaders are too impotent to act. Please get me out of here. You know, guys, sometimes, as a species, we go way too far. Sometimes, we gotta stop while we're ahead. But oftentimes, we don't. The Sonic movie is still being worked on. EA is still making money somehow. And somehow, somehow, Jumex keeps on rearing his Earth-chan-looking ass everywhere I go. Now, I have already made a video on this guy. And if you haven't seen it, I have great news. You don't have to see it. However, I do recommend that you do, mainly for the sake of context and my more extensive thoughts on Trapped, Loner, and Wish Me Death. I don't want to just repeat what I said in that first video, so watching it would be very helpful. Also, it gives me ad revenue. Please give me money. Now, with that out of the way, the question is, who is Jumex? Well, I'm glad you asked. Jumex, aka Mark, last name unknown, is an emo rapper. Yes, it is a real genre, and no, it's not as bad as you think. However, Jumex is special because he is as bad as you think. His music is painfully derivative, ripping off the styles of Lil Peep, who is dead, and XXXTentacion, who is also dead. Let's get freaky now. Let's get fucking freaky now. However, since my first video, something interesting happened. Jumex got a lot more done. Within the mere five months since my first video came out, Jumex has released an entire EP, three new music videos, had three live shows in Tokyo, and had a grand total of one interview on Genius Verified. Oh, and his first American live show? Oh, that's coming up. If you live in and or near Las Vegas, mark your calendars for November 1st, because on day in Vegas, Jumex will be there, performing with a couple of no-name small artists like Lil Uzi Vert, Juice World, Denzel Curry, and that's just on Friday. On Saturday, they have Travis Scott, 21 Savage, Da Baby, Lil Baby. There's a lot of babies in the rap career, I guess now. And on Sunday, they have Kendrick Lamar, Tyler the Creator, Brock Hampton, Ski Mask the Slump God. Let me clarify this again. Jumex, fucking Jumex is performing the same weekend at the same venue as Kendrick Lamar and Tyler the Creator. That's like having a music festival on the on a three-day weekend, right? And putting Davi Vanity in the same weekend as Rage Against the Machine and I don't know, fucking Led Zeppelin. And just as a reminder, Jumex has accomplished all this and his first breakout single trapped isn't even a year old yet. If this isn't a sign that Jumex is a clear industry plant, you might be retarded. So please check that out. You might actually have a, a mental disorder, my man. Anyways, enough emo rap foreplay. The point is Jumex got a lot done. However, sadly, quantity of actions don't result in quality as in better music. In this video, I'm gonna go over his fan base, his amazing genius interview, and his EP to see if there is anything that can be salvaged from this industry plant. So, 
Let's dive right in. Now, why do I want to cover Jumex's fan base? Well, first of all, I'm Dumsville. I always cover the fan bases here. But secondly, I think looking at who Jumex's fans are gives us insight into how he's still maintaining popularity. Aside from, you know, the artificial industry plant stuff. Now, a majority of Jumex's fans are on Instagram, which also, so am I. You should follow my Instagram page. It's really good. And if you know anything about Instagram, you know that there's a massive circle jerk of fan pages. And Jumex has a lot of fan pages. People like I'm a Jumex lover, Lowy Jumex, Jumex World, the Italian fan page, Luwuv Jumex, Jumex underscore Ig. I hate people and I love. <laughs> Jumex Daily, Jumex, Jum dot X underscore and underscore dot love dot Jumex dot Billy dot underscore are just a few examples of the Jumex fan base. Now, I do have a compliment for the Jumex fan base, and it's that while they're pretty cringy, they're not toxic. I don't doubt that somewhere underground there is some Jumex fan who sends death threats over Jumex. But so far, the fan base is pretty tame. They mainly stick to your normal Instagram edits, stuff like images and videos. But that doesn't answer my question. Who are these people? The problem is, Jumex is such a strange entity in the music scene. His growth is unnatural, and his music is literal garbage. So my question is, who is listening to this? Well, good news, I might have an answer. I recently found a video called Turning Myself Into Jumex, Green Heart, Blue Heart, Green Heart. And let me tell you, this video really puts some shit into perspective. So let's check this video out. Oh, oh my, you know, out of all the things I expect, I never expected to watch a video where Jenny Romano from The Darkness tells us how to become Jumex. Also, the music in this video gets like really ear rapey. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go deaf by 24. Also, there's copyrighted music in this, so I might have to replace that. Anyways, let's move on. So this is her. Jenny Romano from the darkness. That's who her is. So Jenny Romano from the darkness fiddles around on camera for a bit. Shows off her amazing hair products. Oh, you use 20 volume cream? Well, I use a DVD copy of National Treasure 2. She then puts on a snapback and rips a fat bong. Is this even allowed on YouTube? I feel like I just violated 20 community guidelines. She then gives the audience a seizure and starts painting her hair. Almost forgot what? I don't even know what you're doing. And then I guess this happens in the, in the video. I didn't edit any of that. She really wanted to highlight that something dropped out of her hair and she was really shocked by it. What'd you say? You know, if you're gonna talk, turn on your microphone. Don't try this at home, please. Okay, please. You might go blind. Oh, so now she speaks. Why are you using a chipmunk voice? You're already showing your face on the internet. You don't need to change your voice. Oh, so now she's Fallout Boy. That's nice to know. Thank you, Todd Howard. So this is after the hair color remover, and I knew I should have obviously- Okay, I can't do this anymore. I'm pitching her voice down. Sorry to risk your anonymity, but I just- I can't stand the chipmunk shit anymore. So this is after the hair color remover, and I knew I should have obviously used it first, but- it just makes me really regret it because I could almost get by with um, going ahead and just doing it at this, but I just wanted to be as light as possible. I'm sure this is very important to our political society, everyone. I'm going to use this. Blue. Not even a DVD copy of National Treasure 2. You disappoint me, Todd Howard, Fallout Boy, fucking... Je Jenny Romano from the darkness, which is in fact a video game 
Wait a minute, that's Lil Peep Nightcore in the background. <laughs> Gus didn't die just to get some random Jenny Romano looking motherfucker to start dyeing her hair like Jumex. Ah, uh, yes, the classic edgy VHS filter. The VHS filter totally isn't overused at this point. Thank you, Vaporwave. Why is the phone case a baby bottle? I really do not like the implications of this. Is there some kind of baby fetish going on here? Please tell me that's not the case here. We don't need no diaper furs, man. I'm not into that. She then does the whole pours and then zooms in thing again. She then begins the transformation process to turn into Earth Chan. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. She then does more bong smoking. Look guys, I'm cool. I do drugs. Tired and unsatisfied. <laughs> Bruh, what's with those teeth? What is with the teeth? She looking like a Blade character. <laughs> Better watch out for Wesley Snipes when he comes into town. She then finishes her look and shows off the results. You could be mad cause baby I'm alone. Yeah. You could be sad. Cause baby I'm a minor. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's Jumex's fan base for you. On the plus side, they're emo girls. On the negative side, they smoke bongs and they listen to Jumex. Also worth noting, you know that Jumex hair dye video was seven minutes long? So you get seven whole minutes of emo rap nightcore and Jumex fans. I totally didn't get bored after like two minutes. Anyways, we're at the 11 minute mark and we haven't even gotten to Jumex himself yet. So let's move on. You wanna play with your Mario game? I had a big Rames as a big tank. So at this point, I'm pretty sure we all know what Genius Verified is. It's that one show where they bring on artists to discuss the lyrics in their songs, which in all honesty, I have mixed feelings about this show. On the one hand, bringing in artists to maybe clear up some vague ideas in their lyrics or even just giving details we wouldn't really know about is a great idea. On the other hand though, the song's genius chooses. Bitch, I'm a cow. Bitch, I'm a cow. I'm not a cat. I don't say meow. Yeah, um, uh, very deep. I be flossing. This meme is dead, but it proves my point. Basically, instead of actually, you know, songs with decently deep meanings, which genius accidentally does sometimes, instead, we mostly get Fatiana Genius Verified. Finally! Finally, a video that goes into the deep metaphorical meaning of Blueface's Fatiana. And apparently, Genius thought that Jumex's Loner was an amazing song to do a Genius Verified on. Also, this marks the very first Jumex interview ever, which is kind of odd how Jumex, this relatively new artist, is able to get an interview with one of the most popular popular music websites of all time. Really makes you think, doesn't it? Well, let's not waste any more time. Let's watch this fucking interview and see what Jumex has to say about his own song. I think growing up like as a loner just taught me to realize that the world like isn't crazy as it seems if you can have control of it. And I think that like Th that's what helped me like create loner and if you couldn't tell already jumex really likes the word like like i understand like if you're thinking and like you use like once or twice but like when you use it like every five seconds like it like really like becomes annoying like jumex clearly didn't mentally prepare for this interview which makes him that much more unprofessional good job jumex good job getting shoved into genius verified with no preparation like 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 gold diggers you know and i think that like that that's what helped me like create loner and like showing the kids that they're not alone and they can do or be whatever they want to be showing the kids that they're not alone hmm you know I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but this sounds a bit familiar. Worst thing comes to worst, I fucking die a tragic 
death or some shit and I'm not able to see out my dreams, I at least want to know that the kids perceived my message and were able to make something of themselves. Wait a minute, did you plagiarize Jaw? No way. No way, you don't plagiarize Jaw. You objectively do not plagiarize my boy Jaw. Rest in peace. It says something. When Jumex is so unoriginal, he can't even write his own original motivational speeches. You had one job, Jumex. One job, and you screwed it up. The inspiration for Loner came from me and McConaughey were in a studio and we were just both like talking about how like being a loner is probably like one of the most common things in life. Whether, you know, you have a lot of friends or little at the end of the day, you're still alone, you know, because you have only yourself. So even if you have a lot of friends that support and care for you, you only have yourself? What? Oh yeah, man, I'm gonna dismiss all my friends and everything because I'm a loner. This sounds like a parody of emo edgy teenagers. Is this guy real? Is this satire? Now this is where Jumex shows off his singing skills. This is raw Jumex. I can't wait to finally hear what Jumex's real, authentic singing voice sounds like. Let's hear those pretty vocals sing, boy. You could be mad, cause baby I'm a loner. Yeah! You could be sad, cause baby I'm a loner. <laughs> Well, props for trying, Jumex. You can tell he's really just hollering the vocals as hard as he can, but because Jumex can't actually really sing, he is just slightly, just slightly in the best way off key. For the hook, I was just like thinking like, if I was talking to a girl and like I'm explaining to her like the feelings I'm going through, that's why I'm, I'm acting the way I'm acting. When I'm in like the deepest state of mind, I feel like, you know, just telling someone like I'm a loner. Yeah, I would totally tell someone that I'm a loner when I'm in conversation. Oh, hey, Harry, how you doing? Uh, not too good, Barbara. You see, um, you could be sad, but baby, I'm a loner. We pop fast, we smoke gas, staying with no fear, try to keep it on the tracks. We're popping pills fast, you know? Yeah, no shit. I used to do a lot of Xanax back in the day, so that's... I would, I would just be dependent on Xanax. I felt like um, doing all this Xanax, I felt like there was no, like I had no anxiety. There was no like pain or paranoia in the world. I just felt like I was unstoppable. Wow, that sounds amazing. Xannies must have really helped you. I'm gonna try some Xannies now. Maybe I'll meet Lil Peep in heaven when I overdose. Cops come and dash, back on relapse. Try to survive and I, where the fuck I am? I would be on like so many Xans, I wouldn't know where I'm at. Yeah, we kind of infer that from the lyric. Did, did we need a genius on this? I just felt like I was stuck and it's not like really good coping with drugs. It just leads you in like a deeper hole. So what you're saying is drugs are bad? I would have never guessed that. Yeah, two bars in my mouth looking like a slushy. Always want to chill, but you love me for my money. I don't really know her, but she really loved me. Baby, I'm a stoner. You ain't getting nothing. Gold diggers, you know? Now I ain't saying she a gold digger. They would go like, they would fall in love with anybody, I feel like, who has money. I mean, that's kind of what a gold digger digger is Jumex. Also, what does the line two bars in my mouth looking like a slushy mean? I would have loved to know. That's the one line I would have loved to know and he didn't explain it. I don't want you. You don't want me. Falling for you. I'm pleading. I don't want you like you don't want me falling for you. Yes, Jumex. That's the line of the song. You've already sung it. You don't need to repeat it. Jumex. Because I, I feel like sometimes I'm so fucked up, I don't want to bring my bad energy like to someone else. Just being a loner and overthinking just makes me like a little bipolar with like my mental um like thoughts. No. Jumex. Jumex, buddy. Bipolar isn't a feeling or an emotion. It's an actual mental illness. This is a big tone deaf yikes, my man. I don't want girls falling for me if, if I'm going to act like that. If I'm not okay. I mean, judging by who your fans are, it clearly didn't work. You know what to do, feeling empty, I'll walk in a pretty hell for you. Yeah. It's just the hell that's pretty. It's just basically like red and fiery, but there's like nice, like nice lavish like couches and stuff. It's pretty, but it's like you still wouldn't want to be there because the intention is bad and 
and everything else is just like hell. Okay, guys, fuck the divine comedy. Now we have a pure, true, amazing, perfect visual of hell from Jumex. Spending it in on drugs is some money well spent. I stumble on a problem I could solve it in my head. I would just spend all my money on weed, like on drugs, just like hydros, coke, just like all the drugs in Chicago. Like I would just spend all my money on, cause I would sell them and use them. Now that I don't spend my money on drugs, it just feels better just using my money for more like useful like purposes like you know music and like softwares and like fl and stuff <laughs> good on you jumex for getting out the drugs and becoming an industry plant drugs get you nowhere like i felt like i was um i was just like hopeless and like i'm like what i'm what was i doing in life but now that i'm off it like i feel much better i feel like i could like complete like any like task or like you know i could change the world like the way i want to now so moral of the story kids don't do drugs Ain't that right, Jacob? So overall, that was a terrible interview. It was really awkward and Jumex seemed really unprepared and unprofessional. It's not the worst interview ever and it's not even the worst genius interview ever, but it's bad. And speaking of bad, it's a new day. I've been counting out the blue faces. On June 7th of this year, Jumex finally released his very first EP. Now, I don't like Jumex. Believe it or not, I I know shocking but i went into this ep kind of hoping maybe he'd be able to flex something he'd be able to do something creative something unique something special in my last video just to summarize my main problem with jumex was that he was way too derivative of other people in my first video jumex was able to write two kinds of songs scar lord type beats and lil peep type beats so i was really hoping Hoping that Jumex would be able to maybe flex something of his own on this EP. However, before we even listen to this album, we encounter a problem. This EP is seven songs long. However, the first song, Intro Poppy Scoville, is a 24 second long intro. So, in actuality, the album is six songs long. However, prior to this album's release, we have had four music videos for four of the songs. Trapped was released six months before the album. Loner was released four months before the album. Wish Me Death was released one month before the EP. And Alive in My Coffin was released one day before the EP. However, as some of you may know, and some of you are about to find out, almost all of Jumex's music videos include a sneak preview you for his next song, meaning that these songs are heard earlier than their initial release date. Furthermore, the music video for the song Alive in My Coffin includes a preview for the song Billie Eilish. Yes, Jumex really named a song Billie Eilish. So not counting the 24 second intro track, there are six songs on this album. Four of them were already available on streaming services. And one of the songs is already available on YouTube as a sneak preview. A cute little sneak peek, a Jumex sneak peek, a Jumex cinematic universe after credits scene. So out of all six of the actual songs on this album, only one of them one song is wholly new, not heard before. However, what if we do count the intro song? Well, guess what? That's not original either. That song, Poppy Scoville, is a 24 second version of an old Lil Jumex song from his past. So not even the 24 second intro is new material. The only new material on this album are the songs Are You Down? and about half, give or take, of Billie Eilish. Already, most of this album I've already heard. We haven't even gotten into the album itself, and already, it has a fundamental flaw. Anyways, let's get into the actual EP. Also, side note, I won't be able to play any of the actual EP for you because of copyright, even though uh, Jumex's legal team was fine with the first video, but I guess fair use isn't allowed on YouTube anymore. Anyway, Anyways, the first song on this album is, like I said before, the intro, 
Poppy Scoville. Once again, it is from an old Lil Jumex song from his old days, which I guess he included because he wanted to show off his evolution as an artist, I think. And yeah, production-wise, it's better, but substance-wise, it's the literal exact same. In fact, the lyrics to this intro don't actually contrast with the message of this EP at all. In fact, it really fits it, but not in a good way. The lyrics lyrics are as follows. Oh, whoa, it's me, Lil Jumex, I'm gonna die. And that's it. The rest of the album carries over the same substanceless edge. It's almost everything I hate about bad, edgy music. The next song is Are You Down? Now, this song is what I'd call a Scarlord type beat. It's Jumex screaming. However, he's not just screaming, he's also singing terribly. For some reason, Reason Jumex has this fake vibrato in this song. I don't know what it is now. I'm a heartbreaker. Is this meant to like impress me or something? Because it doesn't. It sounds terrible. Also, the lyrics are rivaled only by Chance the Rapper's The Big Day in terms of sheer terribleness. Run fast. I'm right here. Don't give a fuck if you're near. Great cocaine. Don't trip. I'll share. What? Are you like an edgy serial killer or, or a cocaine dealer? Head is so crazy. My dad is not there. What does that mean? I don't know how to live now. I'm a killer. I don't know how to live now. I'm a heartbreaker. Are you down for it? Are you down for it? These are like really bad Death Grips lyrics. Yeah. The next song is Trapped, which I previously talked about in my last Jumex video. So I'll be short but sweet. Once again, this song is more substanceless edge. Talking about death and drugs because that's on the emo rap checklist, right? But the big problem with Jumex is that he literally steals the flow from people like Scarlord and Suicide Boys. It is extremely blatant and shows that the only reason that Jumex is somewhat popular is because he's like other emo rappers, which makes me wonder why would I listen to Jumex when I can just listen to Suicide Boys or Scarlord? The next song on the album is the classic song Loner. Once again, I've already kind of reviewed it on my last video. So once again, I'll keep it relatively brief. Anyways, the song Loner isn't actually that bad. It's a song that's easily Jumex's best song. But even then, it's only a 6 out of 10. The hook is really catchy and memorable, to the point where even my roommate will start singing it. And the production is really good. Just a shame the lyrics fucking suck. The hook is vague edginess at its finest. It's like it was made for 15 year olds to go, Oh man, I'm a loner too! I feel the exact same way, Jumex! The lyrics don't include anything profound. The only profound thing is the slushy line, which Jumex does not explain in the Genius video. But I guess on the website, he does? I just remember being on a couch in my house, like, with me and my friends, like, just cracking bars. Then 20 minutes later, they'll be like, Holy fuck, your eyes are droopy, you can't get up, your couch locked. I just looked like a slushy. I just looked like a slushy, droopy and stuff. And after a couple trips to UrbanDictionary.com, apparently cracking bars means taking Xanax. Mystery solved, boys. Anyways, the next song is Wish Me Death. And guess what? Guess what? It's the exact same song as Trapped. I kid you not, these two songs have the exact same structure. They start off with Jumex being all calm, sometimes even whispery. And then they transition to him screaming. And then guess what? It's Suicide Boys knockoff time again. It's literally the exact same kind of flow from Trapped. It's the exact same song. I kid you not. The only good thing about this song is the music video. I don't know. I kind of liked it. The cinematography is actually really 
good in this. Same for the lighting and colors. I like the contrast between the people outside of Jumex and Jumex himself. It's quite eye-catching, really. There are also shots where Jumex turns into this weird Jumex monster. Yeah, it's really edgy, but it's also really subtle, and you wouldn't notice it on your first watch through. So good job, Jumex. You had one decent music video. The next song is Alive in My Coffin. Easily the worst song title on this EP. Now, good news, this is the third best song on the album. Bad news, it's still a bad song. It's basically a whiny emo folk song. Right down to the alive in my coffin, try to die sorrow, try to die sorrow, that we hear Jumex wailing out in the chorus. It's another vague, edgy emo song that really wants to be one of the best and saddest emo rap songs, but lacks the brutal honesty of someone like X. The passionate vocals of Trippy Red and just for the record, Trippy Red's new album was fucking trash. Or simply even the raw sound of Lil Peep. Also, take a look at these lyrics. Alive in my coffin, try to die sorrow. Try to die sorrow. Won't see you tomorrow, I'll be dead. I can feel the desperation in Jumex's lyrics. And by desperation, I mean the desperation to be Lil Peep. I don't know about you, but this line reminds me of a line in the Lil Peep song, The Way I See Things. The idea of I won't be here next blank because I'm dead is also in this song. The very first line, in fact, I got a feeling that I'm not going to be here for next year. So let's laugh a little before I'm gone. However, unlike Jumex spelling out that he will be dead, Lil Peep is way more subtle and at least tries to find optimism, unlike Jumex, who's being edgy and romanticizing edginess and depression. Jumex continues to throw around emo cliches everywhere in the pre-chorus. You can't complain when I'm heard cutting up my veins. Music in the back, listen to Cobain. Blow in the back, that's my cocaine, my cocaine. Self-harm? Check. Kurt Cobain? Check. Drugs? Check. All three in four lines. I keep on crawling, try to survive. No, I won't make it. I know I will die. Crawling in my skin! Overall, this song is a bunch of cliches on a checklist. The last song is Billie Eilish. Yes, as in that Billie Eilish. There are no other Billie Eilishes, but it is the Billie Eilish. Apparently, Jumex has a thing for Miss Eilish. Ooh. However, um, there's a problem. So, uh, Jumex was born on February 14th, 2000 making him 19 years old. Billie Eilish is 17 years old. Now, I'm not saying that Jumex is a pedophile, but writing an entire song about Billie Eilish and putting in a model that looks just like her in the music video of Billie Eilish, even though she is still a minor? Yikes. Uh, Jumex, please take a seat. Anyways, let's read the lyrics to the song Billie Eilish. The first verse goes like this. I, I, I love little girls. They make me feel so good. What the fuck? I love little girls. They make me feel so bad. What the fuck? Oh, sorry. That was the wrong song. That was the song Little Girls by Oingo Boingo. Let me go back to the correct song. So this song is actually a really good sounding song. The melody is really good. The chorus is catchy. The instrumental is really bassy but also has a nice guitar riff to it. It's very psychedelic, and it's a chill-out song that's very sweet and charming. You, you know, as sweet as a song about, you know, fucking Billie Eilish, a, a minor can be. But also, as a big emo rap fan, this song sounded familiar. Like I've heard it somewhere. That's because, guess what? This song isn't actually Jumex's song. The original song is called Strawberry Blonde, and it's by an emo rapper named Lil Soda Boy. And when I mean the exact same song, I mean these are literally the exact same song. Strawberry blonde in the sun rays. Strawberry blonde in the sun rays. I'll pop a pill now. 
Now, unfortunately, Lil Soda Boy is known for deleting songs left and right, and it's a shame because his original version is amazing. So, the question is now, did Lil Soda Boy know about this? The answer is yes. In a now-deleted tweet, Lil Soda Boy said himself, happy to be involved with this record heart. Love you at Jumex. So Lil Soda Boy is now a fucking chill, pouring out his music for money to industry plants. Glad to see my favorite underground genre isn't broken at all. Also, retitling the song to be Billie Eilish is an extremely bad idea. And not just because Jumex is wanting to peg an underaged minor, but also because the song is about a strawberry blonde girl in the sun ray, and yet Billie Eilish very clearly isn't Strawberry Blonde. I guess Dyed Silver isn't as catchy as Strawberry Blonde, but then again, neither was the Age of Consent. Overall, this album was horrible. It genuinely ruined emo rap for me. Every time I think of emo rap, I can't help but get depressed because this album exists. Out of all the songs on this album, there are two that are decent. One of them isn't even Jumex's own song song, and the other one is so derivative, I might as well just put on some Lil Peep or something. Overall, this EP is trash, and Skins was better, and that's saying something. Zero out of ten. I love my wife. She's the best. In conclusion, emo rap is dead, and Jumex killed it. Jumex is the 2019 Davi Vanity. We had a good run, but unfortunately, Gus overdosed on Xanax, Jaw got shot, and Jumex is in the top spot. Oh, <sighs> thank God that's over. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like down below. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you excuse me, I'm gonna listen to some I Love Friday. Let's go, real emo rap. <laughs>